is the team of Tedalian Aviation. Every day they risk everything. Alaska's treacherous terrain and wicked weather make this the world's most dangerous place to fly. These are the tales of Alaska's ultimate bush pilots. Right here. Oh, wow. there. Oh, yeah. Look at her. Alaska is a bucket list destination for many. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah. The last frontier draws visitors from around the globe. Almost four times the state's population visits Alaska every year. And so it's a huge tourism state. One of the tours I really like to do is taking people heliboarding or heli skiing. It's crazy, the sights are amazing, you're landing on mountaintops. It's just a stunning, out of control opportunity. It's a chance of a lifetime tour. Is the guide in the loop already? I've already brought the guide into the loop. Good. Tenalian manager Carrie Irwin books these special tours. We just got hired by professional snowboarder Mike Bassich to go heliboarding. Heliboarders are dropped off on a mountaintop. They board down, are picked up, and return to the summit. Essentially, the chopper becomes a chairlift. Just getting in the helicopter is a rush itself. Um, but going out where we're going to go today, out in the middle of nowhere, is kind of like that level of just letting go of, to feel something very independent. It's amazing Alaska can do that for you. You think you can get us in some tricky spots if you need to? Yeah, yeah. OK, I like that. Lead pilot Josiah will fly Mike and guide Mark Barajas deep into the Alaskan bush. This is probably one of my favorite things to do. I'm very excited to get a chance to take these guys out and get them in the, in the mountains of Alaska. Mark has been an Alaskan backcountry guide since 1995. Mike and I have been working together for a long time, so we have a lot of trust in our relationship. The avalanche danger has just been considerably high. We really have to be on our game, guys. Heads up out there. You touch one sweet spot, and that whole slope is going to explode, bounce off there, and take you with it. I definitely have had some close calls with avalanches. It's a pretty unique experience when you go from riding to total fear, out of control. So I think the first thing we should do is try to head out here towards Palmer Creek. It's close. I know the clouds are coming in over there. What's that elevation over there? Probably about 5,000 foot OK, that, that'll work. If that doesn't work out, we can head out to the Connect area. The weather's better out there. It's a good backup. It is a lot farther, though. Our alternative is about 45 minutes in, so it's pretty remote, and we just got to not make any mistakes. Let's make this happen, guys. All right. All yeah, right. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Let's get loaded up. Palmer traffic, helicopter, Foxtrot Zulu Hotel, Kilo taking off from the fuel pumps, and we'll be eastbound. All right, let's go heliboarding. The guys are heading to Palmer Creek, 35 miles southeast of Anchorage. Looks like some sheep down low right down there. Oh, yeah, I see them. Yeah, I'm going to go do some fun after this. <laughs> Let's Being a bush pilot is in the Tenalian crew's DNA. Joel's making sure that this passion is passed on to the next generation. We're going to climb up to about 1,500 feet and okay. work on spin control. Today we're going to go flying. Micah, my son, he wants to be a bush pilot. No, I've been flying since I was about 11 or 12. OK, what do you do when you get into a spin? You let the plane fly. It's kind of been a dream of mine to have one of my kids want to be a bush pilot. And Micah is passionate about it, so I'm letting him get the feel for the airplane with me. Today's lesson, recovering from a potentially deadly spin. All right, so let's go practice. It's kind of like getting into a sardine can. And crank it. Do a right turn. Do a left turn. OK, good. Way back by the bridge now. Back. 
Hey, Micah, you start getting in trouble, that's what your brakes are for. All right. Teaching Micah how to handle emergencies is paramount for Joel. He's seen his fair share of trouble in the air and knows what's at stake. I was flying out west of Port Oldsworth. So I was crossing a ridge at a 45 degree angle, but slowly was fighting the wind, the downdraft I was getting into, so my airspeed was dropping. Well, then when I turned away, I probably got a hit of about 60 or 70 knots on my tail, and that's when I went into a spin. And the updraft was so dramatic that it flexed my airframe, my door flew open, the GPS flew off my panel, hit me in the face, and I thought, this is it. Take forward, get your tail up. Be ready with right rudder as the tail comes up. Joel is teaching his son Micah how to recover from a potentially deadly spin. It's a lesson Joel learned the hard way. All of a sudden, with a rush of wind, I'm doing like probably like 180 knots, which is unreal for a Super Cub. With the wind hitting my airplane so hard, and I was also I had just come out of a spin, the tendency is to want to pull back and slow your airspeed down really quick. But you have to ease it back. You have to ease it back. Had I recovered facing the hillside, I wouldn't be here. I recovered facing away and flew out of it, climbed really high above the mountains, and kept going. And those experiences, the more you have, the more you start to feel small. I got five kids, man, and I've seen enough death. I've seen enough crashes to know that it can happen to me tomorrow. There, you've got the plan. I've got the plan. Because of flying's inherent danger, safety is Joel's number one lesson while teaching son Micah how to fly. Yeah, let's just do a nice big circle. Yes, sir. What's my airspeed? 60. Okay, here's how we do a spin right here. Releasing the stick. Go back in it. Okay. A little more. Do not lose altitude. Pull that stick back, 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 back. If you start losing, add power to keep from stalling. And hold altitude, just hold altitude. Got it, Boop. Uh, a little more. Oh boy. Put down that circle by that bush. Oh, that's awesome. Pass off. Hit the brakes slowly, gently. Oh, and that was nice. That was really nice. Okay, you're good to go, man. Joel wants to give Micah an appreciation for flying in Alaska. Every day, I'm saying, look how beautiful this is, and what do you do? I, I agree. <laughs> no, you don't, because come on, man, you say that every day. Today, the state's beauty is touching the entire Tenalian crew. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Josiah is taking snowboarder Mike Bassich and guide Mark Barajas to Palmer Creek for a hella boarding adventure. We might be able to ride all the way down this valley, might be the way down here. Alaska is breathtaking, but it also has a dark side. The biggest peril, unpredictable weather. I don't know, guys, this is where I wanted to get you, but it's, uh, these clouds are starting to move lower and lower. It's building from Prince William Sound and trying to push over this way, so. When you're going up into these mountains, if you're not scared at all, then there might be something wrong with you because everything out here is against you. And you're in Mother Nature's house right now. Yeah, it's just, it's just rolling in right here. We don't want to get in here and get trapped. It looks like we'd be better off trying over by Connect Glacier. And I agree, Josiah. We'll just cruise straight across the Chugach Range and go check out that area. Sound good, Mike? That sounds great, man. Safe game. The majestic glacier north of the Chugach Mountains is 45 minutes away. I'd like to get in here and make sure this happens before those clouds get in. We don't want them to roll over and take over our day. Now let's get me on one of these peaks, which we can before that weather whirls in. Downside to those mountains are 
It's 45 minute flight. So we are super deep in the backcountry. That's why it's so important to make sure that everybody has an understanding about what kind of situation they're putting themselves in today. Hey, we got enough fuel to stay out here for what we need to? Uh, we can stop and get fuel in Palmer. Right on. Flying in Alaska is challenging because you're dealing with remote weather. You're dealing with fuel uh, management. You can't just stop anywhere for fuel. You know, you have to make sure that you can get there and come back. Severe weather and fuel shortages aren't the only threats today. Avalanches are also an unforgiving hazard. I saw this morning the report for Avalanche. 2,500 was kind of our sketchy layer. Yeah, we don't want to be anything lower than 3,000 by any means. At this time of year, spring, the snow below 3,000 feet is dangerously unstable. If we go into the wrong spot, you're going to have a lot of rotten snow. That snow could collapse the layers below it and cause big avalanches. I saw the avalanche report. Our avalanche danger has been considerable. You think it's pretty, pretty ready to go? The snow is already starting to rot underneath. We see a lot of activity today. We are going to see it. Oh, look at the beautiful Connect Glacier in front of us, gentlemen. Josiah is taking snowboarder Mike Bassage and guide Mark Barajas to helleboard on Connect Glacier. You see these little avalanches over here that release during the storm? Yeah. It's springtime here, so the avalanche conditions are pretty, pretty big right now. The group must find a spot where Mike's boarding won't trigger an avalanche. Right now, it's just filling up. It's just waking up right now, you guys. Yeah, the sun's hitting it. Yep. We're just going to have to get a look up here and take a look, see what's loaded up, how reactive they are. Somebody gets buried in an avalanche, which is high potential right now. You only have about four and a half minutes before somebody has possibly permanent brain damage. bit of activity. There's still loaded up in here that hasn't gone, hasn't done anything. We're going to see a lot of activity today. We are going to see quite a bit. Look event. at that stress right there. Nine o'clock. Yeah, guys, I don't like that slope over there. It looks like a pretty high risk of avalanche. People die in avalanches all the time up here, every winter. Let's go on over here to this other side. The other danger they face are snow bridges thin layers of ice that appear solid, but hide deep crevasses. You see all those depressions over there, Mikey? Yep. Those low spots could be sagging snow with little bridges on them. Those are more terrain traps that could just be iced over. I don't really like this in here. It's just too much, too long of a run and terrain yeah. traps. Yep. Too much, too much stuff in there. See this ridge right here, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, it looks, it looks really great to work with. You see this, where that's nice and flat? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have as much um, depressions in it. I haven't seen any fracture lines at all yet. Nope. Got a good run out. There's not much consequences from the left or right. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, I'm liking that a lot. I'm we liking that a lot, too. We're at 5,500. Perfect. I love that. All they need now is a safe landing spot in some of the trickiest terrain on Earth. Oh, the slope's looking nice. You guys tell me where you want. Basically sh straight ahead, but a little more out in the middle where we're not going to be affected because those avalanches run farther than you think. You know, as long as I have just a, a spot as big as a skid, so we can get in there. A lot can go wrong if you try to put it down on a spot where you really shouldn't. If you mess up, it could be a million dollar mistake. I think this is pretty good right, right in here. Uh, yeah. Far away enough, right? Yeah. Do you think you can get us in here? I think I see a spot. OK, Mike, uh, this spot, I'm not going to be able to set it down. I'm just going to tow in right here with my right skid. So a tow in is where you don't actually land the helicopter. You just kind of put part of the skids against the slope or the ridge line and get it close enough where they can get out safely, but you haven't actually landed. A tow in maneuver takes skill, experience, 
and a steady hand. We're right next to the big corner. You see those rocks right below you, Josiah? Stand by. When these helicopters are landing on ridges, they don't know what's underneath the snow. They don't know how much snow is there. They don't know how far they're going to sink down, you know, whether one side's going to have a rock underneath it. So we're all at risk. All right, here we go. I'm going to get set here. It's coming down. OK, I got my right skid on. It also means Mike exits the heli while it's still technically in flight. The whole back half of my skids are sticking off the ridge line, so just get out really slow. Anytime the weight changes like that significantly, it'll rock the helicopter, and I'm still just barely touching the ground here. Okay. Got quite a bit of wind coming out over the ridge here. So just hang tight till I give you a nod. All right, go ahead. Okay, well, I'm just barely teetering here. Be clear. Okay, I'm coming in. Is everything uh, secured? Yes. Josiah is dropping off heli boarder Mike Bassage on top of Connect Glacier. Okay, I'm going to get set here. Coming down. Because the ridgeline is so steep, Josiah can't land. He must perform a toe-in procedure, meaning his front skids touch the snow, but his back skids will not. Okay, I got my right skid on. I'm just barely teetering here. This dangerous maneuver means Mike will exit the helicopter while it's still in flight. Just get out slow, Mike. When you get out, just stay right there next to the helicopter, and I'll depart. Gotcha. It's the moment of truth, not just for Mike, but for the two men whose job it is to keep them safe. We're clear. All right, I'm out of here. We'll see you at the bottom. OK, Mark, I'm going to circle around and watch him as he goes on this first run. Make sure, uh, make sure it's all good. Roger that. OK, there he goes. Get me dropped. The guide and I are both kind of on point, kind of watching him really closely on the first run to see what the snow is going to do and see how he's feeling. Yeah, if we see anything rip loose, we're going to go right in there and get him. Yeah. This looking good? Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, man, he's flying down there. Oh, the snow is so good. So oh, yeah. I know. It's killing me not making runs, but he's okay. Me too. <laughs> That's the life of a guy and a pilot well, sometimes. I know. He's so smooth and fluid. At any speed that he's going, he makes it look really good. OK, let's circle back down to the bottom and pick him up. Man, he went fast. This was some fun vertical. For the most of it, I got to just let it flow and uh, have some fun out here. Man, that was crazy. Let's do that again. All right. I almost kind of want my board on this one to go down with him after. <laughs> Alaska is amazing. You get the point where you want to go. The pilot, if they're skilled enough, like this one, they'll take you there. Look at those clouds coming in on us. I know it. I know it. This probably be the last one. Looking at fuel and everything. Okay. I like to try to learn something new every time I fly. And so these kind of drop-offs up on the ridge line are tricky and fun. And I was really excited to get to do this today. Ah, oh, there it goes. Nice. You can have all the greatest riders in the world. You can have great guide, but without an awesome pilot, we're all at risk. How did that snow feel, Mike? Felt good? Awesome. Cool. Uh, look at all that ice moving down the Connect Glacier. Beautiful over there, guys. Man, I would actually really love to see this right now. <laughs> Jealous. Heli in Alaska is amazing. I highly recommend it at least once in your life. Get out here, experience something you never have, because you cannot find this anywhere else. The Tenalian crew 
are not traditional bush pilots. They're modern day aviators flying a new route. We all have a picture from 20, 30, 50 years ago of the Alaska bush pilot and what it is. I, I think in many ways that's kind of disappeared. Technology, safety, really good equipment, uh, talented people out there flying. So that mental picture of the Alaska bush pilot has changed. The rewards of being a bush pilot, in Alaska especially, are it's an adrenaline rush. It's adventuresome. You don't make a super good living being a bush pilot, but it's a quality life.